You all are very aware of the um, ongoing emergence of the, uh, the challenges of the disabled and the uh, need for the um, uh, non-disabled or the abled or whatever the term is uh, population to begin to um, not just meet the needs of the disabled but to recognize them as just uh, equivalent Canadian citizens. Uh, so we got a lot of things now in terms of uh, uh, access to public buildings and so on that are definitely showing progress but there's a long way to go. Stephen Passmore is my guest and he is someone who is not only disabled himself but also a real advocate for the disabled and we're going to have a little talk about um, this from his perspective. Welcome Stephen. Uh, thank you for having me Jim. You, uh, first of all, you, you have uh, cerebral palsy. I do. Now, is there another name for that? Or is that, is that the best known as cerebral palsy? Yes, uh, the short name is CP, CP, but either way, you're up the crack. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, are, you are less disabled than many with CP. Uh, you, you walked in here on your own. You, you, you're not limited to a, a wheelchair. No. Um, and you also speak very clearly uh, without uh, any uh, real uh, difficulty, right? And I, I've known many people with CP who have a tough time speaking, uh, and yet, uh, in every other way are just perfectly uh, capable, well-educated and, uh, and all of that. But th there, there has been uh, a significant attitude change in the last 20 years. You've, you've highlighted it. Uh, tell me a bit about what you're seeing. Well, uh, because of the Robert Latimer case, the repercussions to people with disabilities are somehow we are, we are less than. Um, when Robert Latimer uh, killed his daughter, you began to feel sorry for Robert Latimer. You forgot the victim was Tracy. And so somehow attitudes have changed significantly from caring for the disabled to saying, well, it's, you're better off dead than disabled. Now, Robert Latimer, uh, he, he, he claimed that his killing of his daughter, who, did she have CP? Is that what she had? Yes, among other things. Among other things. He claimed that it was, a, it was like a mercy killing. He just couldn't bear to see her suffer anymore. Is right. That right. Right, and because, because some parts of the media began to exploit that to move ahead the agenda of the right to die uh, people, um, they, they focused on Robert Latimer's uh, pain and suffering. And so they changed people's attitudes. Uh, and so what we would like to do today, and I have been doing for, for several years now, is begin to change people's attitudes. And the media must be a part of this uh, reestablishment. You see, the bond between the abled and uh, the uh, people with disabilities is broken. Uh, because we're in a culture that is hidden away, we're on the internet, we're, we're so isolated, um, and we're not around people with disabilities, uh, we no longer see them as something to be cared for. Uh, we are beginning to see them as something to be gotten rid of. So, so, so how, do, how do we, I, I hear what you're saying, how, how do, if the bond has been broken, how do you reestablish the bond from your perspective? Well, first of all, people with disabilities, they need examples. And so um, by having reporters uh, that have visible disabilities, by having uh, a visible face in the media, this will show to the Canadian public that we aren't just a drain. We aren't just waiting in pain to die, which is what is being painted in, in some parts of the media today. And what that will give us is equality. What we are fighting for is equality, value, and acceptance. Now, uh, the, the uh, current Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, David Onley, um, he was for many years a broadcaster on City TV, uh, and he would sit there in his uh, in his uh, um, chair. Uh, and now, as the Lieutenant Governor, you know he he goes from place to place with his little uh, electric um, device, and and he is very uh, very effective, very high profile. 
Uh, is this what you're talking about? People who, who actually have that kind of uh, profile as a, just a natural, committed, uh, everyday Canadian? Yeah, yeah. And, and see, um, what, what this will do is portray people with disabilities in a different light. And, and people will begin to see us uh, as, as equals. So, wait, but are you saying here, and, and I just want to be clear, that uh, because of Latimer and maybe other high profile cases, there's been a few others, that essentially the discussion of the disabled has sort of been reduced to a discussion of uh, euthanasia? Yes. Huh. Yes, because we don't get, like, this is the first interview on Crossroads itself where you and I are discussing how can we make the changes necessary whenever I've been on before is to be to discuss uh, the latest uh, developments in the euthanasia debate right but but we must go beyond that and uh, this is what I'm attempting to do now I, I read um a couple of letters that you wrote to the Prime Minister and to the Premiers and uh, to other uh, governmental leaders across the nation. And you, make, you made the point in one or both of those letters, as I recall, that uh, Canadians with disabilities uh, must be able to decide their own future. Now, when you say that, what do you see? Like, when, how, how, do, how does the disabled community actually begin the process of deciding their own future? Where, where, what would be the essential DNA elements there as far as you're concerned? Well, see, this is where uh, we're talking about access to the media. Okay. The and days they, of speaking for us, to us, as I said, yeah. without us, must stop. So when we're having discussions, the, the person that is doing the interview, I would like to see having a visible disability. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't want you at the table, right, Jim. Right. I do. Yeah. But I want the person uh, also that has the visible disability to have more of a say and to reestablish eye contact with the Canadian public once again so that they can get... If you're around a lot of uh, people without disabilities, they're very uncomfortable around a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, people's attitudes of the wheelchair have changed. Once we saw them, and this is one of the things we need to do, we need to see the wheelchair for what it is. It is a liberator. Mm. It's not a bad thing when, when the reason we invented the cane was so that the person could go to crossroads and be interviewed. Yeah. So, so this is the attitude uh, that we need to, to reestablish, that these are aids of progress and that that to be in a wheelchair to to have a a physical aid is a wonderful thing yeah you know i've never thought of a wheelchair as a liberator but you're absolutely right uh did rick hansen uh, help to uh, liberate a lot of people in chairs when he went around the world in his wheelchair I, i'm sure that uh he he did wonderful things uh for the uh, community with people with disabilities but um we, we can no longer have a, a lack of public face. So this is going to lead to our destruction. So your main focus is media? Um, yes, to, to, to re-educate people's attitudes towards people with disabilities. And it must be done because if it isn't done, the next time there's a euthanasia bill, it's going to be legalized. Yeah.